Well, good evening and welcome to uh, White River High School Stadium on the campus of White River uh, High School in B- Buckley, Washington tonight. Uh, for the first round of the West Central District 3 Class 2A football playoffs tonight, the North Mason Bulldogs take on the White River Hornets. This is a winner advances loser out contest that pits the Olympic League number three team, the Bulldogs, against the South Puget Sound League number two team, the Hornets. Hi everyone, I'm Deidre Allen. Joining me for tonight's game is Hall of Fame coach Lim Elway. Good evening, Lim. How you doing, Deidrick? <laughs> you doing your little cold over there? <laughs> no, I'm just gl- I'm just thankful it's not raining. Yeah, you know. we're all thankful yes. about that. Uh, it's not what was uh, soggy and wet as I had thought it would be, but a little brisk. As it, but we are in store for a uh, great ball game. Uh, similar in styles, both these teams rely mostly on the running game, but both uh, go to the air for big plays when necessary. North Mason comes into tonight's game with a 7-2 and two record. The Bulldogs had a high-scoring affair in the swim last week, beating the Wolves 69-46. to It's a high-scoring affair there. White River has a 6-3 and three record and was shut out by uh, Sumner. Uh, 35 to nothing last Friday. Do the boys from Belfair have the momentum, or will uh, or will having back-to-back long road trips take its toll? Will White River get back on track and take care of business in their own house? We'll find out in just minutes. Coming up next, uh, we talk to Bulldog coach Jeff Beavers. It's the West Central District Three uh, Class 2A football playoffs. North Mason at White River next on MasonWebTV.com. Seconds count. In just 30 seconds, a small fire inside your home can double in size, or an oxygen-starving seizure can kill a million brain cells. Seconds count. So when you call 911, take a deep breath and answer every question, starting with the very first one. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 911 needs your exact location. 911 needs to know where to go. On the phone with me is a North Mason football coach, Jeff Beavers. First coach, I want to congratulate you on your uh, season so far. It's been a pretty good run for your Bulldogs. Uh, thanks a bunch, and uh, yeah, absolutely, it's been a lot of fun. Now let's talk about your season. The last time we spoke was uh, just before Week 2 game against Shelton, and um, you started to kind of hit your stride at that point. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, we uh, yeah we started playing pretty good team football and uh, carried it over uh a couple of weeks after that, and then we uh, ran into a couple of really good opponents in Kingston and uh, North Kitsap and stumbled a little bit, but found out a lot about our team. Uh, they were able to uh, really pull together, and, uh, you know, we put three uh, three solid wins back, uh, back to back to back, uh, and it was really good to see the kids rally together. Now, from my standpoint, watching from the outside, I guess you can say, um, you know, you went up to Port Angeles and you beat them, and then it seemed like everybody started to pay attention to you when you uh, beat Bremerton. Yeah, you know that. Uh, I, I think it opened a, a few eyes, and um, you know, it sure gave our, uh, some attention to our team. And uh, you know, those were some 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 of the part where we just kind of learned to, to to grow as a team, and uh, uh, it, was, it, it came at a good time. 
Now, when you uh, went up to Kingston and then you played North the Kitsap, uh, what what changed in your team? Uh, you know, I think uh, a, a couple of things had kind of happened, and, and this is something we've shared with with the group and as we've talked through. Uh, but uh, you know, heck, we were four and zero, uh, and we have never been in that situation, and at least in the last four years, and and uh, a little bit of pressure there. And we started playing a little bit tight and uh, didn't handle it real well. Um, made mistakes, started playing a little bit uh, uncharacteristic to what we had been doing earlier in the season. And, and uh, But the, the, good, the good news was we were able to clean it up. It took us a couple of weeks, uh, but we were able to clean it up, and uh, we, we really started progressing after those two games. So we were able to, to learn some things about uh about the group of kids, and they learned some stuff about themselves. And uh, uh, I feel like we've handled uh, this, this recent success that we've had uh, much better than we did the, the first four. Now, I want to ask you about last week's game in uh, Squim. And you had that in, in hand, and then, you know, next thing you know, there's just touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. What happened towards the end of that game? Uh, gosh, you know, we, we kind of crazy. Uh, started, we started playing with some younger kids, uh uh, but, uh, you know, I, and one of the things that we'd even talked about at halftime with our kids, and we, we knew this, but regardless of what Squim's record is, they they compete hard, and uh, they really do some good things. They just, uh, you know, sometimes when uh, when you don't win, win games, it uh, seems like anything that can go wrong goes wrong. And I uh, kind of feel like that's where they were at, and, it wasn't from lack of uh, having moments where they played well. And uh, they had been in that situation before throughout the, the season, and they did. They came back out a- after halftime and uh, really put put together a good game plan and uh, competed hard against the kids. And and uh, just having some younger kids in there, we, they weren't quite ready for that speed of uh, play. And, uh and it did. It just kind of got crazy. And points, you know, they'd score a couple, and then our kids would score, and then uh, you couldn't get the clock to keep running. <laughs> but in uh, the end, in the end, you didn't manage to get a longer drive going to run out that clock, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, we finally uh, were able to uh, kind of slow the game down and 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 just grind out that last five minutes and. Uh, and and get out of there with a win, and uh, get it get out of there healthy, and uh, and, and finish the game. I, you know that was another thing, just uh, teaching our kids how to finish the season, and uh, so you know it was a good win for the program. Now let's talk about Friday and uh, your opponent, White River, going into the playoffs. They're 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 what I call uh, they are identical twins. Uh, to some degree, uh, we, we look very similar defensively and, uh, offensively, uh, I, I would say we, we don't look similar in what kind of styles of offense we run, but I, I think the, the philosophy of what they do and what we do are pretty similar. Uh, they like to control the line of scrimmage. They like to control the clock with their run game. Uh, they, they do pass, uh, uh, to, for big plays, uh, keep you off balance, uh, but uh, an awful lot like what we are. Uh, you know, uh, some of the things that uh, I know about them, they're, they're, they're a very disciplined football team. They they really uh, uh, capitalize on your mistakes, and they make, they make very few mistakes. And uh, uh, so we're going to have to play a good, clean game to, uh, uh, to be able to get out of there. To win. Now, how does your team feel about going into this playoff game? I, it feels like the season has started over again. Uh, our practices have been crisp. They've been uh, competitive. They've been physical. Uh, it's it's like we've started the season all over again, and people are competing for starting jobs and competing for some varsity play time, and uh, it's fun, spirited, uh, uh, again, it's just like the season starting all over again, and 
uh, really has us excited. Now, after around nine weeks of football, any injuries to report? Uh, you know, we we lost one of uh, one of our seniors early in the year in the Bremerton game. That uh, Master was uh, uh, he was still playing. Us, Doug Snover uh, really started hitting his stride in that uh, Bremerton game, and uh, just caught a body falling into him on a tackle, and uh, <clears throat> had to have some knee surgery and. Uh, kind of unfortunate with him. A uh, couple other kids uh, we kind of lost early in the year as well. With uh, Devonte Davenport uh, was uh, going to be a big part of what we were doing this year. He he went out with a pretty pretty good hamstring pull. I think maybe after the uh, after that uh, Shelton game. Uh, but other than that, uh, just your normal bumps and bruises. Uh, we are getting a couple of kids back that had some high ankle sprains uh, that uh, had missed a couple of games. And uh, we're, we're as healthy as we've been all year. Um, and so uh, we're feeling pretty good about that. All right, Coach, I'll let you go. Thank you for the time, and good luck on Friday night. Uh, thanks so much. It's cool, love. And that was North Mason coach Jeff Beavers. His Bulldogs taking on White River tonight here on MasonWebTV.com. We'll have more of the pregame show coming up next. Nearly everything we depend on wields the immense power of electricity. Skyscrapers that hold our commerce, ovens that warm our food, hospital beds that chirp our heartbeats. But they say, with great power comes great responsibility. This bodes well for hydropower because in the Northwest, it provides 90% of our clean, renewable energy and keeps 100% of our air clean. Adventure begins at explorehoodcanal.com. And we're just moments away from kickoff here at uh, White River High School, North Mason and uh, White River. The Bulldogs and the Hornets. Uh, the uh, Hornets won the toss and deferred to the second half. And so the Bulldogs will get the ball to start this game off. Now, from a coaching standpoint, Lim, your feelings on that? Take the ball, defer? Defer. Defer. Always defer. Defer if you can. Because okay. Emotions are high the first quarter. Uh, let them uh, let the other team have the ball. Get the emo they'll be emotional, maybe prone to a mistake, and then you get it back to second half. All right, the uh, Hornets have it teed up at the 40-yard line. And who's doing the kick in there? Boy, I wish I could see that number. It looks like 22. Yeah. Okay, 22. It's uh, Alex Morris in the run-up and the kick. And it's a high end-over-end end kick that will be taken at the 10. Oh. Straight up the middle to the 20, powering his way uh, across right. the uh, 30. I didn't see who got that. Was it uh, Tommy Rennie? Yeah, some beautiful blocking by the uh, quote-unquote wedge up the middle. He just ran over a few guys, but uh, good blocking by uh, the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs start out with the ball on their own 33-yard line, first and a 10. We'll see what uh, Coach Beavers has uh, dialed up for tonight on the first play. Looks like Mac Becker is going to go under center. He'll hand it off and busting into the secondary. They're getting up near the 40-yard line. Had to be Tommy Rennie. Or I'm not Tommy. No, Tommy no, Marsh. No, Excuse no, me. Tommy Rennie was a couple years ago. <laughs> nope. It was number 28. Josh Becker. Okay, Josh Becker. We'll figure this all out yeah. before we'll get rolling here. So that'll bring up a second and short. Looks like a second and two. And off again up the middle. Not much there on that run. 
And uh, that was Andy Rennie on the carry that time. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. First play was off tackle. Second play was right up the middle. And uh, it came off tackle to the right to our closest to us and, and got a really good gain. And uh, that might be the power of uh, the Bulldogs right now. The ball spotted on the 42-yard line. Third down and we'll call it one. First possession of the ball game for North Mason. Opening drive. Handoff goes to Tommy Marsh, powering his way at the line, pushing it forward, still on his feet, goes across the 45. Great effort. That's all, uh, Mr. Marsh. We're going to be calling his name a lot tonight, as usual. That was kind of like a rugby scrum. (laughs) I wonder how Tommy would do in a rugby scrum. I'm sure he would hold his own. Hold his own. So it's first down for the Bulldogs at their own 47-yard line. Clock is running, 10 and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Opening possession of this ball game. Playoffs on, well, we're in the playoffs. A single setback, it looks like. Becker back to pass. Got a little pressure, throws it out there. Marsh just off his hands, incomplete. Second down coming for North Mason. Boy, that was close to being sick. That was a great pass, and and Marsh just out of the fingertips of Marsh. uh, That would have connected. That would have been a great start to the game. So it brings up second and ten from the 47 for North Mason. Shuffling some players in and out there. Then Matt Becker will go under center again. March in motion to take the handoff. There's a flag on the play. March going around the left side, fighting his way across midfield into White River territory, but we do have a flag in the backfield. Kind of went flying 15 yards that flag did. Yeah. We'll see what the call is. Illegal procedure. Now on the Bulldogs. Illegal motion penalty on the Bulldogs. So the clock stops at 10.07 to go here in the first quarter. Well, in the early five or six plays of the game, Bulldogs have had their way running the ball except for one play. But other than that, they've pretty well uh, controlled the line of scrimmage, especially... Uh, off tackle to the left and off tackle to the right. They've had good games. The only one they really had a bad problem with was trying to go right up the middle. So the Hornets decide to decline the uh, penalty and take the play and bring up a third down. Rather, and do a second in 15 or a third that's, and six. Hmm. No, that's not. That's, I don't think that's. I guess. Well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Maybe you just want if you're uh, yeah, okay. on the White River side, maybe you just want to get them out, to get them out as quickly as possible. Under center goes Becker. He's going to pass again. Got a little pressure. He's on the rollout. Got a guy out there. Throws down the middle. Intercepted, oh. and that's a uh, uh, kick in the Fagan yep. with the interception. The one thing I was looking at, Lim, and I didn't save the the document, but I was looking at the. Uh, Quarterback comparisons, and uh, the sophomore, Becker, has uh, this will be his ninth interception on the year. So uh, Sophomores make sophomore, sophomore mistakes, yeah. and uh, you can't fall. He did a great job of getting outside the tackle. It was a good play. It's just, that, you know, as we talked about earlier, Keegan kids is a, their premier uh, football player on that team. So, And he is a single setback for White River. Man in motion, that's France. Handoff goes to Fagan. Fagan cuts up the middle, and he's met by a big bulldog there in the middle. Uh, I'm believing that's going to be uh, Chad Schoenhoven with the tackle there. Yeah, but not after Fagan gets, uh, what, it looks like four yards? Yep. So it'll be a second down and six from the 34 of White River. Hayes, hand it off to Fagan again. He'll just uh, burst up the middle, fighting his way past the f- uh, first down marker and gets an extra five yards up to the 45. Well, like we were talking about before the game, they better get used to number four running the ball. And if they can stop number four, they probably stopped about uh, 80% or 90% of their offense. So uh, I don't think they're going to try to dazzle anybody. They're just going to go after him with Kagan, and, and uh, the defense for the Bulldogs has to stop him. Simple as that. First and 10 from the 45 for White River. 
Hayes gets a man in motion. That's France again. And off to Fagan. Fagan going up the middle <laughs> again. Gets six, seven yards. On the tackle, looks uh, it's like a Justin Hill with the tackle for North Mason. No, they're saying Doug Snover. I thought Doug Snover was still out. <laughs> well, just be, that doesn't mean he's right. Well, that's true. Derek, that's true. That doesn't yeah, mean he's right. Yeah, very true. Come on. The second down and then four from the Bulldog 49 for White River. Fagan goes in motion. Hand off, a little to stutter step there. Trying to fight his way forward and being pulled back by the Bulldogs. Uh, so that's going to be uh, Tristan Canals. It'll be for, it'll for be uh, one yard to go. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, it was uh, Tristan Canals <laughs> on the carry. He got close to the uh, first down marker. It'll be third and one from the North Mason. Let's call it 46. Seven forty-five to go in the first quarter. No score. White River with the ball. Fagan goes in motion, and flies go flying. Offside, um, White River. Oh, you say a false start on the uh, well, White River? Start, yeah. Well, okay. Same difference. Five yep. yards. <laughs> All matters. Five yards backwards. Five yards backwards. Third down. Six. Puts it back on the uh, forty-nine of uh, White River. See, the only difference on that, if it's offside, they don't stop the play. If it's yes. uh, false, false start, start, they do yes, stop. That's exactly right. Okay. Thank you for the teaching. No, no, no. <laughs> so third down, six from the 49 for White River. Empty backfield for uh, Hayes. He'll get Fagan, uh, and he got the hand uh, handoff in the backfield, and busting in there was uh, uh, Tom, or Andy Rennie. And Fagan trying to get something out of nothing, and he ends up uh, losing a little bit more. I'll tell you, Andy Rennie was the one that got in the backfield and broke that thing up. That was a, that was a great defensive play. He didn't have anywhere to go. So a loss of, uh, it's like six on the play. It brings up fourth down and 12. Ball's back at the 43-yard line of White River. And they're getting the punt formation. Trying to see who's back deep for the Bulldogs. It's a high, short kick. It's going to hit about the 39 and go sideways, and it's going to be down right there, 39. Is Morgan Grewell back for the punt? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. It's from this distance, I couldn't tell if it was a 5 or an 8. So the Bulldogs get the ball back. After the interception. So uh, nothing uh, doing for the uh, Hornets on their first possession trying to capitalize on a turnover. And the uh, Bulldogs are back in business with the ball on their own 38-yard line. First and 10. Becker will settle under center. Man in motion. That's a handoff in the slipping around the left side. All I saw was a four on there, but there was two digits. By 40, Tommy yeah, it's going to be Tommy Marsh. That's what I thought. If in doubt, Tommy Marsh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should just take that yeah, advice. I'll just call, start calling yeah. Tommy Marsh unless I see otherwise. And he picked up, what, six on that play? Yeah. Five. On, five, five and a half, we'll call it. On, Second, and we'll call it four and a half. On the option, Good job. Becker keeps it. Gets a couple, three, maybe four yards on that run, running around the right side. Or, yes, the right side. Um, the Bulldogs are running outside because in the two A gaps between the center and the guards on both sides, you have some beef. Um, White River has a lot of beef there, and so on that one play they tried to run up the middle, they had no success, but they blocked down and they can run off tackle either left or right, and they seem to be able to get uh, White River to make some miss some tackles. Call it third and two. From the 46-yard line, hand off to Marsh. Marsh uh, slips around to the left side, still on his feet, going sideways. But I think he got enough for the first yes. down, right at midfield. Ball came out there at the end of the play, but it'll uh, stay. They're going to say it was down. And you notice it doesn't. He doesn't get taken down with one or two no, guys. No, no, he's taking guys with him. <laughs> Does a good job of keeping his legs moving and keeping uh, running north and south. 
So just shy of the 50-yard line, the Bulldogs will uh, go first and 10. A man out here wide. Hand off in the middle, diving forward. That's a number 28 to Josh Becker. So Matt Becker to Josh Becker on the handoff. Yeah, you know, we didn't we didn't get the start and line up for the for the linemen on offense, but I'll tell you what, they are doing a great job of of, of blocking people and getting holes for the running backs to run through. They're doing a tremendous job of, if you watch the movement from the line of scrimmage, it's always you know, away from the line of scrimmage of uh, the Bulldogs. So they're, they're getting a good push right now. So second down and eight from the uh, White River 48. Back to pass goes Becker. Becker throwing deep. Got a man there. It's complete. And inside the 20 down near the 15-yard line is uh, oh, it's going to be Burgraff on the catch. That's what I thought it was, the, the, the speedster out there. Daniel Burgraff with the catch. And a first down to the 13-yard line. Excellent play. They had that set up very well. And, and that little sophomore quarterback, Becker, Matt Becker, threw a strike right to him in stride. And, and uh, that could have very easily been a touchdown. First and 10 from the 12 now for uh, North Mason. Under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. 